good morning from sunny Berlin. It's very quiet here this morning. Just me around. I'm not having a coffee. I think most people are still in bed because uh, they were out partying until the early hours. One guy got back to our room just as I was getting up. Um, so I don't think I'll have any problem coming down and chilling out down here. Um, I'm just about to have breakfast before I go off on a massive walk around Berlin. So let's see what the breakfast is. And normally they do buffets, but during these corona times they're not allowed to do that. So instead we've got a kind of cake thing, Madeline cake, chocolate bar, and a lovely apple. And to wash down the lovely apple, We've got some lovely apple juice. So that should keep me going for about 10 minutes. Today's plan is to explore a lot of Berlin by foot. A lot of walking to do today, which is why I'm up early. So, um, yeah, let's see what Berlin's got to offer. So I'm starting the day on Raniernberger Straße, um, which used to be one of the main Jewish districts in uh, Berlin until pretty much the whole population was murdered during World War II and now it's uh, popular with tourists as it's just pretty much bars and restaurants and this is where I was last night actually uh, it was the first uh, bar in Berlin that I visited the last time I came here and it's very cool um, it's really nice inside so I came in and had a beer and this place, I think it's this place it's a bit of an old ghost legend about uh, this place because apparently many people have spotted uh, the ghosts of two children uh, but you can only only catch them out of the corner of your eye apparently and no one knows uh, from what era these children are from I'm not sure even if it is this building actually because there's supposed to be coins stuck in the walls but I can't really see any evidence of that um, so the one of the few ghost legends of Berlin. Probably not this place. Anyone see any coins? No. Maybe it's one of, it used to be over there and it's all been redeveloped. Anyway, yeah, so this is Orienberger Strasse and uh, as I said, it uh, used to be the Jewish district. Then it became a bit kind of run down and uh, filled with squatters and beatniks. Um, and now it's a uh, big touristy part of Berlin. You can see the uh, TV tower in the distance. Um, lots of street prostitution on here, although I didn't see any last night. Um, but last time I came, they were, they were all over the place. Um, it is legal in Germany, so... Right, let's go and have a look to see what else we can find. quiet in Berlin at this time of day. Maybe nothing's open yet. It's very nice though. Well I'm feeling re-energised now. I've just had a absolutely lovely coffee in a place called the House of Small Wonder. Um, sat out in the back, the back garden, it was really nice. Three euros for a good coffee. It's the first good coffee I've had in a long time, actually. Uh, well, this is an interesting discovery. Sophie Kirch, which uh, Martin Luther King did a sermon here in 1964. And uh, this was during the partitioning of Berlin. And during that sermon, he said, that no man-made barrier can erase the fact that God's children live on both sides of the wall. I don't think it's open. But what is interesting, if you look at these buildings, I don't know if you can see that, it's just absolutely riddled with bullet holes.